good morning and welcome you all to this session of the course on fluid machines. Now, today we will first discuss the diffuser. Already we recognize that the centrifugal pump consists mainly of an impeller and a diffuser. Now, the main function of the diffuser is to convert the kinetic energy into static or pressure rate, because the final output of the centrifugal compressor is in the form of the static pressure. When the water comes out of the impeller, then it has a substantial portion of kinetic energy along with the static or pressure energy. So, this kinetic energy is ultimately converted to pressure energy or the static heat in a diffuser. Diffuser is a fixed part and that is the stator of the pump, because you know in general fluid machines as a rotor and a stator. So, rotor is the rotating part where the energy transfer takes place that is the impeller here and stator here is the diffuser. So, basically diffuser provides a flow area where the flow area which increases in the direction of flow that means it provides a diverging passage to the flow. So, that the velocity is decreased and the pressure is increased. Therefore, we recover the static heat from the kinetic heat, kinetic static energy from the kinetic energy. Now, the diffuser are of two types. One is the simple volute as already we have seen in the centrifugal pump that an impeller and the volute. So, in K volute is the spiral casing or the scroll casing like this if you uh, recall. So, this we already uh, recognized earlier that the impeller has a volute here you see this volute, this is the volute casing <coughs> where the flow comes out of the impeller passage to this spiral casing and this spiral casing in the direction of flow provides a area which is increasing and ultimately the kinetic head is converted to static or pressure rate. Now, when it comes out you see in the diffuser if you neglect the viscous effect of the fluid its angular momentum is conserved and the fluid actually uh, executes a motion which is similar to free vortex motion with respect to its tangential velocity and at the same time it is coming with a radial component of velocity from the impeller outlet which under ideal case is uniform, but there is a non uniformity for several factors I told because of the viscous effect in the of the fluid in the passage plus the slip. So, is radial flow is superimposed with a vortex flow which is close to that of a uh, free vortex flow gives a spiral type of flow which is known as spiral vortex flow. So, it is designed the surface of the volute is designed in such a way that this matches with the spiral vortex streamline for the spiral vortex flow. So, accordingly the surface of the volute is designed. Usually the 10 percent of the heat generated by the impeller is lost in the volute casing because of the viscous action of the fluid. So, finally, the fluid that is the water comes out of the volute chamber where the pressure energy or pressure is uh, sorry the kinetic energy that is the velocity is converted into pressure that is the static heat. So, this is a typical volute which is a spiral casing. Now, we already discussed that to have a better diffusion and in an efficient diffu diffusion means this process is known as diffusion here in terms of this fluid machines terminology that this decrease in velocity and increase in pressure in a flow is known as the process of diffusion and this passage is known as a diffuser passage or diffuser. So, to make this process more efficient, we sometimes use that I told earlier a vein diffuser that means there are rings ring at in which these vein diffusers are attached. That means before going to the volute or scroll casing, the fluid flows to the vein diffuser and these passages of the vein are diverging type and this is also fixed, these veins are fixed veins. This is known as vein diffuser and if you provide the vein diffuser that means the pump becomes more compact with efficient conversion of 
kinetic energy into pressure energy. That means, the process of diffusion becomes more efficient and in a relatively smaller area that is size of the pump is less. So, therefore, in depending upon the uh, requirement we sometimes this is recommended that pump with diffuser vanes and also volute casing as the diffuser. Okay. You see a typical such diffuser with vanes. So, these are the vanes, vane diffuser, a vane diffuser of a centrifugal pump. So, only the vane part of it. So, this is the diffuser vanes. So, this gives a area divergent to that. This is the diffuser throat. Initially, it is a little convergent, then ultimately it becomes divergent. Now, one interesting part is that there is always a veinless space. This is the impeller outer periphery. So, from the impeller outlet to the entry to this ring of diffuser blades, there is a veinless space. Now, this veinless space is provided to accommodate this spiral vortex flow, the direction of the spiral vortex flow in a way that there is an shockless entry, proper entry to the diffuser vanes without much loss. That is why a veinless space is given. Now, while designing the diffuser vanes, few things are taken into consideration. Number one is that the angle of divergence of the diffuser vanes, that is the diffuser passage or the diffuser should not be more than 8 degree, maximum 10 degree, between 8 to 10 degree to avoid the boundary layer separation, number one. Number two is that the number of blade, uh, sorry, the diffuser vein passages and at the same time the number of diffuser vanes is optimized in consideration of the two contradicting things. One is that if the number of passages, diffuser passages is more or the number of diffuser uh, vanes, vane diffuser vanes is more, then the process of diffusion or the process of decreasing the velocity and increasing the pressure becomes efficient. If we can divide in more and more channels of diffusing passage. But at the same time, if you give more vanes and more number of channels, the frictional losses increases. So, a compromise is made between the frictional losses and the process of diffusion that recovery of pressure from the kinetic energy, a the number of diffuser vanes is optimized. And number three consideration is that the number of diffuser vanes and the number of impeller vanes should not have a common factor so that resonance can happen anytime. To avoid resonance, the common there should not be a common factor, common multiple, one should not be a common multiple of others. That means, number of diffuser vanes and number of impeller vanes should not have a common factor. So, therefore, these three things are taken into account while designing a diffuser vane. So, finally, in a centrifugal pump, we have an impeller which imparts the energy and coming out from the impeller, the fluid has both high pressure and high velocity. So, this high velocity is being reduced to a lower one and pressure is increased much more. So, that at the final outlet from the centrifugal pump, that is the discharge end of the diffuser, we have a high pressure but low velocity water. And this diffuser may have a only spiral casing which is known as volute chamber with increasing area in the direction of flow or for an efficient diffusion and for a reduced size of the in, in a reduced within a reduced size of the uh, pump we have both vane diffuser and the spiral casing or the volute chamber both ok. And with this I just conclude uh, the brief discussion on the diffuser of the of a centrifugal pump. Now, we will see one very important thing that is cavitation in a centrifugal pump. You just recall the cavitation which we already discussed in France relation to Francis turbine. So, cavitation in a centrifugal pump, cavitation in a centrifugal pump in a 
centrifugal pump. Now, in general cavitation in any hydraulic circuit means what is cavitation? Cavitation in any hydraulic circuit means that the pressure anywhere in the circuit should not fall below the vapor pressure of the liquid at the working temperature, so that vapor bubble gets generated. This is the in general the basic principle. So, vapor bubble should not be generated. What happens? The generation of bubble takes place, they collide each other and ultimately they come and hit or bombards the surfaces of the blades, surfaces of the diffuser, diffuse, diffuser and ultimately erode those surfaces. So, this give makes a detrimental effect and cause damage to the machine. So, this phenomena, this cavitation is avoided if the pressure of the liquid is below in the circuit at any point in the circuit, any section in the circuit is always above the vapor pressure at that working side working temperature, so that the vapor cannot be formed. In fact, the cavitation forms even the pressure is not the vapor pressure even little above the vapor pressure where the dissolved gases for example, air dissolved air they are liberated in the formation of bubbles which randomly moves and bombards or strikes the different solid surfaces the blades of a fluid uh, impeller the machine impeller or the surface of the uh, diffuser, the stator part of the machine, guide vanes, so that the machine gets damaged, the erosion takes place, the machine gets damaged. So, this is precisely the cavitation phenomena. In reaction turbine, we have seen there is a likelihood or chance for the pressure to fall below the vapor pressure at the inlet to the draft tube, where the pressure is always below the atmospheric pressure. Similarly, in a centrifugal pump, we have to see that where whether there is a chance of pressure going below the atmospheric pressure or much below, so that we have to take the caution that the cavitation is avoided. So, then let us just see this, draw this a pump. Let us stay like this. Let us this is a reservoir, lower reservoir or sump. Let this is the pump. Let this is a flange at the end of the inlet pipe and this is the discharge. This is another flange, this is the discharge. So, this is the discharge and this is the inlet. So, therefore, fluid is as the impeller rotates, the fluid is sucked from the reserve sump lower reservoir and goes to the pump and it gets the energy from the impeller diffuser all these things you know and comes out at high pressure and with low velocity and it goes to the discharge line to either vertically up or for the transmission and distribution in the even in the horizontal plane. Now, in this case you see if we designate this inlet section this inlet section as 1 and this free surface of this hump as 0 and let us define this elevation vertical elevation or height of the pump center from this free surface of this hump as z. And now, if we write the Bernoulli's equation between any two points one at the free surface here another at any point here at the section 1 along a streamline we can write this here the pressure is atmospheric pressure P A by rho g, velocity is 0 at the free surface and we consider this free surface as the datum. So, this is 0 okay, equals to the pressure here is P 1 at the inlet to the pump at the end of the inlet pipe plus if we consider V 1 is the velocity of the flow in the inlet pipe considered to be constant throughout if the diameter is same 
otherwise v 1 is the velocity at the end of the inlet pipe or the inlet to the pump plus this elevation z plus the head losses due to friction and which include all the losses major and minor losses while friction in the pipe along its length losses in the bends losses here in the flange losses here there is a strainer there is a strainer losses in the, in the strainer that means it includes all frictional head losses okay now from here it is evident and apparent that p1 by rho g equals to p a by rho g minus v 1 square by 2 g plus z plus h f h f not 2 h f h f. So, therefore, this is positive this is positive head loss is a scalar quantity positive. So, therefore, you see the pressure at the inlet to the pump at the end of the inlet pipe or it is known as suction pipe sometime it is known as suction pipe these are the terminology you must know suction pipe always falls below the atmospheric pressure. How much it will fall below the atmospheric pressure or what will be the suction pressure depending upon the values of this quantity. So, there is a likelihood that the cavitation may occur here if we allow this pressure to fall below the vapor pressure of the water at the working temperature. Now, in this case also we define net the similar way as we define in case of turbine net positive suction head net positive suction head which is n p s h as the sum of the pressure rate plus velocity head at the outlet of the suction pipe or inlet pipe over the head corresponding to vapor pressure, vapor pressure head that means P b by rho g where P b is the vapor pressure at the working temperature. The similar way we define the net positive suction head that means available suction head inclusive of dynamic head pressure head and dynamic head over the vapor pressure head. And similarly we define Thomas cavitation you just recall in case of turbine Thomas cavitation parameter Thomas cavitation parameter parameter following the name of Dietrich Thoma equals to this N p s h that is uh, no before that sorry before that we have to work out something I am sorry before that we can write this N p s h as if we now substitute p 1 by rho g plus v 1 square by 2 g from here p a by rho g minus z minus h f this can be written as p a by rho g minus same thing, but written in a different way the way it is expressed minus z minus h f. Now, we define sigma as Thomas cavitation parameter Thomas cavitation parameter Thomas cavitation parameter sigma which is equal to this n p s h p a by rho g this is the definition of n p s h here I replace this with the help of this equation. So, that this becomes this minus p v by rho g minus z minus h f divided by the head developed by the pump. Similar way we define for case in the case of turbine and the same way we define the critical cavitation parameter, the critical cavitation parameter, critical cavitation parameter, parameter, critical cavitation parameter sigma c equals to P a by rho g instead of the vapor pressure it will be the inlet pressure to the pump that means the pressure at the outlet of the suction. So, it is not n p s h instead p v by rho g I write p 1 by rho g the same way we did. 
Now, for cavitation not to occur, for cavitation not to occur, for cavitation not to occur, not to occur, what will happen? P 1 by rho g has to be greater than P v by rho g and therefore, the Thomas cavitation parameter has to be greater than sigma. Now, this Thomas cavitation parameter has to be greater than that. In the similar way, I explain what is done in practice, the sigma c is the characteristic parameter of the pump itself. For the design, from the design of the pump, we get this value at its design condition sigma c. So, we have to make this sigma higher than sigma c. So, always we give some allowance that sigma should be as large as possible than sigma c. This is done by reducing the value of h j sorry j that means, this j is has to be reduced to have a higher value of Thomas cavitation parameter for which sigma must be greater than sigma c. So, that there is no likelihood of cavitation to occur. Okay, for cavitation not to occur, this is the condition. So, therefore, z has to be made as close as possible okay. and this is also very clear from the very first instance by writing the equation. You see this p 1 by rho g will be lower provided z is high v 1 square by 2 g high and h f is high. So, for this reason things are done like that sometime if the sump level is at a very lower level then z is sometimes reduced even to a negative value that means, the pump is set sometimes below the free surface of the water. A reduction in z you can think that if you want to pump water from a well. So, if you place the pump on the surface of the well the ground surface and if you give make a suction pipe or inlet pipe of very long deep pipe to take water from that free surface of the oil which is much much lower then what will happen the z this value of z is tremendously high which may create or may result a pressure suction pressure at the inlet to the pump or at the end of the uh, inlet pipe below the vapor pressure of the water. So, therefore, to avoid that you have seen that in almost in all operations for this uh, type the pump is actually kept will lower at a lower level that means, it is not kept at the top it is kept very close to the free surface. So, therefore, z has to be made low. Another thing is that h f friction factor should be made low as less as possible. So, therefore, the suction pipe should be more smooth and it should avoid the bends unnecessary valves. So, that is why unnecessary valves are not given in the suction side. So, that it should have minimum number of valves, minimum number of bends and other things which cause frictional losses. And for this there is sometimes a very common question that if there are two pipes which are lying on the laboratory or in your shop floor one with a higher diameter another with a lower diameter and you have to use one at the suction side of a centrifugal pump for its installation and another one at the delivery side you will always use the higher diameter pipe on the suction side and lower diameter pipe on the delivery side. This is because if you use the higher diameter pipe the flow velocity will be less, the friction factor will be less and if flow velocity is less and friction factor is less then there is less likelihood of cavitation to occur. So, reduce the cavitation always you use a higher diameter pipe in the suction side. So, length of pipe bends and other things valve should be made as small as possible as less as uh, small as possible as low as possible. So, that the cavitation is not likely to occur that means, the pressure at the end that is the most critical point the pressure at the end of the inlet pipe or at the inlet to the pump should be higher than the vapor pressure should not fall below the vapor pressure should be higher than the vapor pressure little more higher than that. So, that air cavitation cannot take place the dissolved air cannot come out in the form of bubble which happens even at a pressure higher than the uh, vapor pressure higher than the vapor pressure of the liquid at the working temperature. Okay. Now, uh, after this the discussion on cavitation is over 
Now, I will tell you another very important thing with respect to the operation of a centrifugal pump that there is a relief valve here in the suction side. There is a relief valve here in the suction side of the pump whose function is not to allow the water in the suction pipe going back to the sump before the operation of the centrifugal pump is there. Why it is done? Before the start of the centrifugal pump, we always fill this suction pipe and the pump with the water. Why? If we do not do so, the pump inlet pipe and the pump is full of air. Now, if the pump rotates, it starts rotating, it will rotate in the air. So, what will happen? It will generate head which is equal to V w 2 u 2 by g. So, the final power or the total energy that will be generated will be multiplied by the density of air and the flow rate of air. So, some flow of air will come and this and the air will come from the atmosphere through this water. So, this will generate a very less amount of heat because of the low density of the air which cannot lift the water from the sump. So, what will happen? The picture will be like that the this head will lift the water from the sump, but it will not go up. The water will fluctuate after going to some height because the pump is rotating in the air and generating very less head because of the lower density of the air. So, pump will unnecessarily be heated if it works for a long time and it may fail and get damaged may be burned out. The motor may be burned out because of the more current to flow through it. So, for this reason the pump before operation should always be filled in with the water which is known as priming of centrifugal pump. Priming of centrifugal pump. Okay. This all uh, makes a brief discussion on centrifugal pump. Of course, we will we may discuss something else in the next class because time is not there for this class little more. So, this is not the end of centrifugal pump few more little more things I will just discuss in the next class. Thank you.